In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different tricks that you can use to maximize the space that you use in your Power BI dashboards. I'm going to show you some of my tips and tricks that you can use to squeeze as much insights as you can, even in something like a one pager dashboard. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand. And welcome to the Solutions of World YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I frequently come across this requirement where I need to provide some insights, being limited by just doing it in a one pager. Now, if you work with Power BI, you'll know how challenging this is, not just because of how many visuals you can fit in one page, but also make sure that the dashboard is not too cluttered. So today I'm going to show you some of the basic features that I use in Power BI to kind of save some space, while at the same time pack as much insights as I can available in this kind of one pager. The first simple tip that I can give you is to increase your canvas size. So if we have a look at this report here, I've created a bunch of visuals in this page, a bunch of bar charts, a bunch of uh, cards. So if we select one of the cards here, for example, let's just zoom in a little bit in this. And let's say we want to reduce the category labels here at the bottom to be a little bit smaller. So let's say we go up to uh, eight. So as you can see, it's already quite small. And in my screen, it looks a little bit too small because we are viewing it in a small screen. But if this report is intended to be presented in a big screen, for example, and you can get away with a little bit more smaller uh, text fonts, uh, you won't be able to go any smaller, unfortunately. It just, it is simply locked to this uh, limit of eight here in the font. So one trick that I use that allows me to kind of use fonts of a smaller size beyond this limit that we have is by simply increasing the canvas size. So if we deselect any selection that we have on any of the visuals and go to canvas settings on the format pane here, you'll notice that we have the type 16 by nine, which is basically the aspect ratio that we have for the canvas. Now, if we change and and click that and instead of 16 by 9 we select custom we can simply adjust the width and height to our liking to increase it or decrease it so increasing the canvas size doesn't scale the visuals that you have already uh, kind of in 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 your page so if we change this to uh, let's say the same kind of ratio 16 by 9 so 19 20 by 1080 as you can see, well, you can't really see it yet, but if I click fit to page, as you can see that part that we had been working on is now in this, uh, in this section. So that means we have a lot more space to work with and the smallest font print that we have now is a lot smaller, even though it's still on the kind of the, the limit of the uh, font size eight. And what's great about this trick is that from the user's perspective, nothing really changes because when they open your Power BI reports, uh, Power BI is set to scale that view that they will see uh, to fit their screen. So it will automatically zoom out by default. So they won't even notice that you've increased the scale. So in a lot of cases where I need to fit in more visuals or you know have the ability to add smaller texts, I typically just increase the scale by about 30 or even 50%. The next tip that I can give you is to use filters to your advantage. So filters lets you maximize how you use some of your visuals in your page by letting your users change their perspectives or be able to see uh, different scales based on their selection and their filters. So for example, in this page, uh, we have some summaries here like total sales and quantity um, for the products that the Northwind um, traders company has sold. But let's say uh, we want to know how much in quantity uh, beverages have sold. Uh, so if we click the beverages, we we don't just get the quantity for beverages. We we have the total if we deselect it and see how beverages are across these different visuals. So it just lets you or it lets your users get the insights that they need by simply giving them the ability to filter the data. One thing that I do though, if I use uh, slicers visuals like this, is I changed it into a drop down menu instead. It just saves a lot of space instead of you know having it laid out like this. 
I'll simply change it to a drop down and move it a little bit higher uh, as part of the header. That just saves a bunch of space on this section to add some more insights in this page. If you work with a lot of filters and you want your users to be able to filter, uh, slice and dice your data in a number of different ways, I do suggest that instead of using filter drop downs like this, is to implement something called a filter page, which is a page that is essentially dedicated for filter, filtering and slicing your data. So in this example, uh, we have the button here, which if you click, will take you to a different page that uh, gives you users the ability to slice and dice the data in a number of different ways. And then uh, once they are done, they simply just go back to the reports and see all the filters that they have applied. The next feature that I utilize quite a lot are tooltips. These are basically the contextual tooltips that you get when you hover over any data elements uh, of your visuals in your report pages to get some more additional information. Now, by default, it gives you some very basic information like, you know, giving you counts or giving you some summary of that data. But Power BI also gives you the ability to customize the tooltip pages so that you can add some kind of custom storytelling or some custom values in those tooltips. So we're looking at an example here of a bar chart where if you hover over any of these months, for example, it gives you a summary of the total sales for that specific month. It gives you the top selling categories, which are you know pretty useful. And as you can see, as it is, it already adds a lot of value um, just to give you that quick insight for that specific month. And you can even customize it further by kind of changing what you see in these tooltips. So at the moment, it's showing us the sales in the context of uh, product categories. But let's say we want to analyze a customer category. So you'll be able to swap around like this. Um, and as you can see, instead of uh, categories, it's now ranking them by countries, which is another kind of useful insight that you might have. So this is actually pretty easy to implement. I covered it in one of my videos a long time ago, and it's the exact same uh, file that I'm using now. So, so if you want to learn more about dynamic tooltips, I'll leave a link to that video somewhere in the screen. Don't forget that if you want to add or give users the ability to see more detail about the data that they see in this one pager, without it cluttering the one pager page, you have the option to use drill throughs, which allows the users to kind of right click and interrogate specific data that they have or they want to see in their pages. So for example, here we have some bar charts that I have created um, with the drill throughs enabled without adding anything in this page. All we would need to do if we want to, to see a breakdown of something is right click on one of these bars, for example, with a drill through uh, enabled, uh, users will be able to navigate to those tooltip pages with the filters already pre-applied to them to give them some more details. So in this case, for example, it gives, it gives, or it shows the kind of summary or detail of sales for the year of 1998. And technically a lot of these features already utilize kind of new pages. So it, your report in essence is not really a one pager anymore, but you have the option to hide a lot of these pages. So drill throughs and tooltips so that your reports in essence will still be a one pager with some kind of supporting pages that can only be accessed from the main kind of home page that you have. So having your designs convey some sort of message so that you don't have to show the data on tables is actually critical if you want to maximize your spaces for your dashboard. So for example, I like to use conditional colors or icons to signify values that are either increasing or decreasing without necessarily adding more data elements in the screen. So here, for example, in this table, I have created a list of products and how their prices have changed from year to year. So if we wanted to see the price change between these two different periods, um, the first thought is to obviously add some values like variance or variance percentage as new columns in this table. However, you can achieve the same thing by simply just using color. So you can, as you can see, it easily highlights, you know, what has changed and what hasn't, and it shows you in what direction. So this gives your users immediate 
insights on kind of this information without necessarily needing to know the uh, intricate details of how much it's changed by if they don't really need that they just want to know you know how or what has changed and this solution that i created here is specifically for that reason to give users the ability to see what has changed or what hasn't changed between different months so it's kind of off topic at this point but if you um, select matching it will just give you the values that are matching and if you just simply want to see what's changed in between these two periods, you will have um, this list filtered out for you. And that's really it for this video. I hope these tips were not too basic and that it's helped you uh, or give you some ideas on how you can maximize your report pages that you use for your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked the video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.